Right, let's see what's in this little bit. Yeah, I ended up rewatching Watchmen a few times. Both the movie, I reread Watchmen, rewatched the movie, and rewatched the series when I was doing, or the series was about to come out, I think, when I was doing Batman vs. Superman rewritten. It's like, yeah, mm -hmm. I actually, you know, I don't hate, you know, I, I don't hate the movie. It's actually like, pretty decent. It's definitely not as good as the comics. But I was surprised right. at how much I actually did enjoy the movie version. It's like, oh, this is actually pretty interesting. Like, Just so that Zack we're Snyder clear, actually we did a good here. Okay, now we know what you're talking about. Yep. So, would you say that it's much better than uh, Man of Steel? Oh, it, it's my favorite Zack Snyder movie. Trust me, I have I have had to I've rewatched every Zack Snyder movie to do BBS stuff, and when I was rewriting, when I was doing the rewrite for Batman vs Superman, yeah, it, it's it's my favorite. Watchmen is probably the best one he's done. 300 is very close behind because I think it's a fun movie. It's dumb and stupid, but you know, it's if you're not gonna, historically accurate. If you're gonna do a Frank Miller project, go fucking stupid. Get the like, dumbest possible shit you can do. <laughs> like, 300 is like, is, it's kind of like the Alamo or Halo Reach. If you're going in there thinking that you're going to be surprised, you're going in there for the wrong reasons. Like, we all knew in Halo that, like, how to post, you, you have no understanding of Halo Reach if you genuinely think that you're going to get a plot twist where Noble Team lives. If you thought Noble Team was going to live, like, why? You knew from the beginning that this was going to be a... a this is one of those games where even in the advertisements you already know the ending. It's it's not even a spoiler that Noble Team dies. You it's and you know that going in. Yeah. Okay. Oh, it's literally beast. one of the fucking Is it the first Halo novel? Isn't it literally called Fall of Reach? Yep. Yeah. yeah. And like every other time they mention it in the games, Reach is always the place that got fucked. So, yeah. a question guy just talked about what about the parody movie 300? I'm guessing it's Epic Movies that that's the one. Where yeah, it's like, that's the one. Oh, meet the Spartans. Here's the thing about it. Here's the thing about a parodying 300. It has, it has never had any substance to it. The movie, the comic, nothing. nothing. There is no substance to 300. It is mostly just style. And when you remove the style, what do you, you're, you have not? You have nothing valuable. Well, it's it's not even just that. <laughs> like like uh... that kind of, parodying 300. It doesn't work because 300 is entirely stopped. Yeah, and, uh... What is it? Uh... Fuck, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> but, like, 300 is at least, like, so fucking ridiculous and stupid oh, that it becomes boy. funny. Um... Well, at the same time, yeah, 300 isn't a movie I imagine you're even supposed to take seriously. Yeah. Um, it, it's supposed to be just, like, a fun action flick, and the entire thing is, you know, to put in my own words, it's spectacle. Yeah. It makes it's a spectacle. It, and it's... Ow. It's surprisingly fun to revisit it. Like, yes, it's stupid, and there's no point going back to it, but it's fun. It's a very fun kind of stupid. <laughs> God damn it. There's a lot of movies that I would say are better, but are not as much fun to go back to. Uh, you know what? I can see that. Yeah. Um, but Z Zack Snyder, I've had, I, I have issues with, but there are some movies that he's done where I'm like, oh, you're giving a lot of work. You, you've been putting in the time to make this look as fucking CG, man. amazing as possible. Do you feel that's the same thing with Sucker Punch? Yeah. Same, oh, they do. That, that's an the escape best pod. example of it. Where it's like, oh, no, Air, Air Force One is, like, scary. Like, with how much shit it has on it. But anyway, sorry. Bliss is, wa we're watching, Bliss is watching a movie in the background. So that's like you watching Air Force One? I imagine, yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, Sucker Punch is a really dumb movie. But at the same time, I can feel that that is a movie Zack Snyder has wanted to make for, like, a decade. And no one would let him make that stupid movie. And I'm glad he got to make that stupid movie because, visually, it's fucking incredible. Like, it's, it's Zack Snyder overload. 
You know what movie I really liked being a spectacle? And it's... This is a movie where you kind of have to know what it's about going in in order to enjoy it, but Sin City. Yeah, that was oh, cool. dude, I love Sin City. Yeah, no, that those movies are fucking great. Like, cause I saw the second movie in theaters with, um... Hey, uh, Goldie, do you remember Nick Z? Nick Z. Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Yeah, that, yeah, that's a name you haven't heard in a long time, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, I saw it in theaters with him, uh... Like 2014, all the way back in oh god, this was so long ago. 2014, and I was in Massachusetts at the time. We were in a ma mass theater. Um, but yeah, god, that, that movie's good. Uh, it's, but I love it because like it's it's really is if you just transliterated a comic into a movie. Yeah. Because some That's... of the stuff looks kind of goofy in a movie, but when you realize, oh, this was this is like a transcription of a comic, it totally makes sense for, in a comic. It's one of the better Frank Miller <laughs> stories. Like, that's one of Frank Miller's better works. Like, because and then he decided that he was no longer going to write any other story besides Sin City, no matter what project. He was <laughs> Frank, Frank Miller wrote Sin City and decided, well, that's it. This is my life from now on. This and Xenophobia. That's all I've got. Frank Miller then, is a fucking wild yep. ride. Yep, he went crazy. Also, um, he made All-Star Batman and Robin. Asphar um, and Holy Terror are still probably the worst comics that I've ever read. Crazy Steve! By the way, uh, shout out to Rose. Hello, Speedy. I, um, nice to have you around. Mm. Also, are there any references in that movie? Which, oh. Oh, you're talking about the parody movies. Yeah, I... That's a... That whole director-writer combo is fucking weird. Um, have you ever seen, uh... It's from Wisecrack. And I think it encapsulates this perfectly with me, like, why I'm not really fond of reference humor. They made a video about essentially just... It shits on Big Bang Theory, but in a way that's so intellectually precise and like correct. God damn it! That yeah, that I like there is no, yeah. Fuck, dude. Because I because I, I usually point people to that video when I mention why I'm not into reference, why I don't do reference humor. Most of my humor is tends to yeah, be more. Yeah, we've had this conversation the, before. Yeah. I think that, um, like when it comes. No, to but that, I, I was bringing it up in the live stream chat for everyone, not just not just you. Yeah. No, we were in the live stream when we talked about it, I think. Because we were talking about community and reference humor, I think. Yeah. Like, that, no, is, I... that is one of the few shows that actually does reference humor well. Because it has enough on its own that it's funny. It's not funny because, oh, it's a reference. It's funny because, like, oh, these characters are funny. Oh, that joke was funny because it fits. Yeah, I, I think it's like, I think it's just a, um, I think it's just tired now. Yeah. Let's be real. It's what, if you grew up on Nostalgia Critic, and most of us did, that's that's when you were or like Family Guy. Those are like the people who really pioneered reference humor. Yeah. And back then it was funny, but now like everyone caught on to it. Now everyone will. Then it, and now it has essentially degenerated into Big Bang Theory, where it's like, I, I made a reference, therefore it's a joke. Even I though really the, want to make a video because I've because HBO Max, I've been watching just random bullshit on it mm -hmm. i really want to make a video where i talk about the big bang theory's first season versus its last because it is surprising that the first season made me laugh more than i thought like it's not a good show but that first season there were some moments where i'm like oh this is actually funny and then the 12th season i was like oh my god this is terrible i th and i think it's that same principle of Reference humor was used in moderation with more character-based things. They were more focused on introducing these characters than haha funny reference. Like I, I really want to make that video because I think that yes, Big Bang Theory is a bad show, but I think mm. it started from a decent place. Like, and it just kind of got worse progressively. It's weird. Um. What, what's another one? Um, there was uh, what is it? There's 
have I, have I ever told you the little meme I have with Josh? I forget if because I'm trying to re remember it better. Okay, here's what I have. Um, an interesting thing about Josh Scorcher, he seemed yes, we've, we've had this conversation yeah. on chat before. On yes. Before. Okay, cool, cool. We're Why repeating ourselves a lot. Yeah. Why are you referencing The Incredibles? <laughs> the Incredibles. Yeah, why does The Conjuring have an Incredibles reference? Because <laughs> it's incredible! Wait, okay, uh, logic, let me give- Okay, Logic, let me give you context. Um, uh, Josh, and his, Josh has in his head that apparently everything we do, we're always- Apparently, he believes that everyone is always making references, or always making a reference joke. And he seemed legitimately dumbstruck when I pointed out to him at one point that I really wasn't making a reference to something. Like, like he can't fathom the idea. And in the middle of reviewing The Conjuring with his brother, like, after they had just seen it and they were posting a thoughts video, they, he said, oh, don't make a promise you can't keep. That's not a reference, by the way. That's not a reference <laughs> to anything. That is just a statement. Yeah, and he's like, yeah, it's so weird. At first, why are they referencing The Incredibles? That statement was in The Incredibles. That's such a weird reference to make there. And Josh is saying this unironically. I, w I wanted to point <laughs> out, it was, it was also in Halo. Yeah. Why are they referencing Halo? Oh my god. Why are they referencing Halo promise. and The Incredibles? Why are they referencing the English language? Holy shit. <laughs> Say, like, continue. Why are they referencing these specific words from the English Oxford Dictionary? It's so in the weird. Incredibles. That's such a weird reference to to make, man. Like, <laughs> oh, I think he needs to recheck his orb thing. menu. Oh, yeah, maybe he's checking orb menu. Or... Why are you referencing time flows? Fuck's sake. <laughs> See, the thing about the thing about orb menu that's going to be great is that orb menu is going to go away for a while, and then it's going to come back in With just a vengeance. random game. Like, the next time you have a game where there's orbs, it's over. Devil May Cry? Yeah. I was thinking Monkey Ball personally, but wait, yeah, wait, that's wait. also a good one. Monkey Orb. Monkey Spear. <laughs> Monkey Spear. Fuck you! Monkey! Prime Monkey Spiracle. The Game Spear. It's. Oh, come on, Game Spear! Incredible Ape Spear. Orb menu is life. <laughs> it is. I, no, know, it's a chat. I can't take credit for that one. It's chat. I mean, considering they're your main form of attack and defense, yeah, orb menu is life. It I'd really like is. Out, Super Monkey Ball 2. I think it was underrated as a GameCube game. Just, just putting that out there. I thought it was a lot of. It's a really fun party game. You know, when you think about it, there's a lot of um, things that we can find underrated. Crazy yeah. Taxi. Everyone remembers Crazy Taxi pretty well. Yeah. Like, yes. like, let's be real. The Crazy Taxi, anything on the Dreamcast, like, I wouldn't say it's underrated because everyone won't shut up about how much they miss the Dreamcast and the and games fine. that were on it. Simpsons Road Rage is underrated because that game is so much <laughs> fun. Jesus, why, am, why is it not a thing anymore? It's so fucking fun. Ow! Fucking hell. So when Damn, you're playing Crazy Taxi, you have to play as BD Joe. Fucking yeah. hell. Somebody yep. mentioned Fast and Furious. Okay, Fast and Furious. Have you guys seen the rumor about Fast and Furious 9? Nope. Are we not going to let everyone get about the Dream Pass Fast? It's going to space, boys! Okay, cars in space. I, I, yes! Uh, it's the Elon no. Musk have something to do with this? I don't know. I don't care. The Fast and Furious movies, like somebody was talking about comfort food earlier, Fast and Furious is my comfort food. It is so stupid. It is so dumb. I love them so much. No, you literally, you really only watch it for cool cars. But here's the thing: I love that because I'm a car guy. Literally not, born in Detroit, car guy. I'm not a car person. I just really love these movies. They're just dumb. They're, I don't even love the first Ow. one that much. Fucker. I like them when they become no. heist movies and then superhero movies with cars. <laughs> Basically, uh, to give you an idea. Sorry. Um, to give you an idea, um, you're a city boy born and raised in South Detroit. No, I, I literally wasn't even. I literally wasn't going to say that. Um, well, guess what? The I impact. Was. 
because everything's a reference. Yeah. Right. Right. What was you saying? Oh. Uh -huh. Yeah. No. Okay. The existence of those movies has actually had an, um, an unsurprising impact on car culture, but it's to the point where um, it is the entire reason why the Supra is a collector's car. Nice. But the problem is also because of the movie, people always want to modify their Supra. So um, what that now means is you might have to pay a hundred grand just to get an unmolested Supra. Jesus. <laughs> Because everyone has the need to like reach in and tune it, and that makes sense. Uh, Fast and the Furious made that popular. Um, so Fast and so because of that, everyone wanted a '90s Supra. That's kind of why they re-released the Supra, um, even though it's technically a BMW underneath it. But whatever. Um, yeah, no, it's literally just a BMW N two forty i or something, something like that. But they just stuck a Toyota badge on it. Um, I don't have a license, so I have no idea. Oh, you don't need a license for that, but oh, one thing it had done, especially to high school, is that it caused every fucking high schooler to think that they were a tuner, and they're like, oh, what's the most successful car, or one of the most successful cars in Fast and Furious? Oh, the Honda Civic. And they're all <laughs> modified in, in the show. So, if you show up to an autocross race, there's like a 90% chance that like half the people, especially the young people, are just in like tuned up riced out ci uh, civics and you can find so many oh, compilations shit. about how these guys have no idea what the fuck they're doing and they just explode on the racetrack nice yeah because it's like oh yeah just put a turbo in your fucking civic why the fuck not you didn't do anything to the cooling system gee that would have been nice to know before it exploded on the drag strip but yeah fast and furious is just the fucking best like I remember the, the trailer for the for Fast Nine came out, and it's like John Cena is now Vin Diesel's Yoink. brother, and it's I'm so happy because like that sounds so stupid. I just every time one of them comes out, I laugh and I I love beautiful. Yeah. No, at this point, of course, John Cena is in Fast and Furious. I haven't been following it at all. Oh, well, I, I, I I Rock is somewhere in there. Yeah, the rock. Has, a... The rock's in it, and the rock is fucking great in them. Because well, that's because rock is. is good in a lot of films. Yeah. No, there was a that's funny. There was a terrible actor. joke that uh, we were telling each other among my circle of friends ten years ago, which was a gamer group. Um, gamer. And it was. Gamer. And it was. Uh, gamer. It was. Uh, Right, it was, um, uh, they were like, oh, Paul Walker, uh, they cremated him today. And my movie reviewer friend among us replied to him and said, it sounds redundant, the crash already did that to him. Oh! oh shit! Shit! I would have said that you would have roasted him, but the crash already did that to him. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> really dude. Funny, Jesus. You're fucking horrible! Oh god! I want to say, he said this, like, months after he died, too. <laughs> yeah, who said this? No, well, not even months, sorry, weeks. Uh, just, like, a couple weeks or so, because they cremated him soon after. So it was, like, fresh. Yeah. I can't, I'm just, I'm so excited about the Fast and Furious 9. If they're going to space, God, please. I really want the next one to go, like, they go through time, they call it Pass to the Furious or whatever. <laughs> okay, if they're going in... How are they going to accomplish that, going into space? I don't care. Dude, th this is a movie series that managed to drive a supercar through a one skyscraper, across the void, into another skyscraper. Who are you to question how they can do something? Do not question these movies. If you... <coughs> okay. If you want to watch the Fast and Furious movies, you need to learn to not think anymore. Because they will... If you stop to think about it, it breaks down very quickly. Yeah. But the my first I can, I can no, no, I can I snap can't. you. No, no, I can, you know, I can snap you even more. <laughs> Mo almost nearly all of the st all of the automotive stunts that in the movie are actually legitimately oh. done without any computer engineering. It's it's ridiculous what they do to these cars. So on one side, it's like turn your brain off because it's unbelievable. But on the other side, to make it twice as unbelievable. They were it's like real. even the thing with. Yeah, even in the times where they're driving on two wheels, yep. that's totally legit. 
Yeah. That's real. It's like, it's like with the Mission Impossible movies. It's like, on one hand, these plots make absolutely no sense most of the time. On the other hand, you have to admire that Tom Cruise is going to kill himself on screen one of these days. Nice. So he's going to pull a jet. He's going to pull a Bruce Lee. He's going to pull a Bruce Lee. Yeah. Or like, even a Brandon Lee. Like the one with, um, uh, which movie is it? I can't remember which which Mission Impossible it is, but it's the one where uh, Tom Cruise hangs off the side of an airplane. And he did that because he's insane. Or the most recent one where he did a halo jump because he's insane. And then also broke his leg during a shot that they used in the final cut of the movie. <laughs> That man I mean, if anything, crazy. you gotta, you gotta, you gotta credit his dedication. He either thinks he's invincible or he has a death wish and wants to die on camera. I guess that explains why he's such an asshole. Oh yeah, he's a giant asshole, and I don't like him most anything else. But I, I love Mission Impossible. It's, I don't know why. 